It took out the 10 years of gathering support to implement these new features, but they're finally here. You can now create any table with any parameter you want thanks to an alliance with Microsoft. We have now Excel inside Revit. Or if you wish there were non-rectangular scope boxes? What about attaching walls to stairs? Oh yes, and the rooms while keeping them 2D when you could also make them 3D. And last but not least, you can now create and concatenate text and parameters inside formulas. Why don't we dive in? Ok, let's fire up Revit 2026. Let's open the sample architectural project and go to the Bleacher schedule. And we see this familiar Excel interface, but it's now within Revit. We can do things like adjusting the size of the columns, but more importantly, we can add a new column. We can call it E and F for consistency, and we can create now a custom calculated parameter. Let's call it total space. And like if we were in Excel, we select equal this times this, and it's calculated. We drag it for all of them, and as simple as that, it's done. But the most amazing fact about this is that if you now go to fields, there is a new calculated parameter, and if you check the formula, you can see that it's a space per person times number of persons. This calculated parameter has been created automatically within the schedule. Isn't that amazing? In Revit, we have had since forever these non-rectangular crop regions that we can use in plans, but what if we could use those as scope boxes on 3D? For that, on Revit 2026, we can create this kind of crop region first on a plan. So if we go for a moment to the 3D view, we can select this scope box, scope levels, and you see it's a standard scope box. But now we can create a new scope box from this crop region. So for that, we go here, right click, select the option scope box from region, and we click it, we go to the 3D view, we change the scope box to the newly created scope box, and there you go, a non-rectangular scope box, finally Autodesk. And there is another simple but never implemented feature, which is walls attaching to stairs. To do that, we just create a wall here, we align it to the end of the stair, and then, like we will do with a floor or a roof, we select the wall, click on Attach Top Base, select the stair, done! Time-saving thing. Thank you, Autodesk. In the same way Autodesk implemented the levels visible on the 3D views, now we have the rooms visible on the 3D view. To do this, first on plan, we make a color field legend for the rooms, and we make the rooms colors by name, for example. If you select one of the rooms, you can see it has a minus 500 offset from the level, and if you go to the 3D view, you will see it's hidden by default. So you need to go to the view settings, look for rooms, enable it, and there you go! Finally, 3D rooms in Revit. And if you select it, you can see it's the same room with the same minus 500 offset from the level. You could even hide the walls and just have all the rooms shown in 3D. Isn't that nice? Here we have a generic model family. First, we will create a new parameter. This parameter should be text, and we can group it in data, maybe. Let's give it a name. Also, let's make it an instance parameter, just so we can easily visualize it on the property panel. And now on the formula field, we can start typing, starting with double quotation mark. This type of parameter has a thickness of close quotation mark. Then we insert the parameter we want to be replaced with text, in this case thickness. And then we continue the text again with quotation marks till we arrive to the next parameter. Same process again. And when we are done, we press enter. If we hover over the value, we will realize that both text and parameters have been combined into one text field. But that's not all, because now if we go to change the value of the parameters, for example, thickness and width, we will see that it updates in real time this text value. But let's change it back and load it into the project to see if it changes also there. We can confirm the original values are still correct. And now we can proceed to edit the type, change the values, and we can verify that indeed it updates those outside the family editor. This is a game changer for those who need to write such descriptions on sheets without leaving a placeholder and checking later on. Thank you very much Autodesk.